I have redirect? No, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. You may step down. Detective Rose should be dismissed, please. And yes, could we get the exhibit? Yeah, why don't you grab that exhibit and take it? That one has the exhibit sticker, correct? Yes. All right, we can keep it uh, by the state for now, and then later on it can be brought over to the clerk. All right, the state may call its next witness. Shusha Rooks. Good afternoon, sir. If you would please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Um, do we need this easel up? No. All right. We're going to have Yeah, or Detective Redland can retrieve it. Yes. She's got to be ready. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Please remain standing. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Brian Schultz. R-Y-A-N-S-C-H-U-L-T-Z. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. <coughs> Sir, how were you employed? I work for the Wisconsin State Patrol. How long have you been in law enforcement? I've been in law enforcement since 2014. Have all those years been with, with, Wisconsin, with the Wisconsin State Patrol? Yes. What is your current position? My current position is the mechanical inspector for the Wisconsin State Patrol Technical Reconstruction Unit. Can you describe the duties of that position? Um, my job basically is to conduct thorough and systematic inspections of vehicles that have been involved in crashes. Um, that can entail something as simple as taking photographs and looking at light bulbs to something more in depth or actually take the vehicles apart and actually look at the moving parts of the vehicles. Did you receive any training in order to perform those duties? Objection, relevance. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes. Uh, excuse me. I believe it would be relevant if you received training because Unlike him, Brooks did not receive any training. And you see how well it's serving him here. Hello, friends. Sally the Seeker here. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I decided I would, you know, because remember he came up at the end of the trial trying to say that there was some, you know, recall. And we know it's just a bunch of lies, lies, lies. And, you know, both... Um, Attorney Basie, which I believe this is probably one of her best ones with this guy. She was very thorough because when Brooks came back with complaints, both her and Judge Darrow said that um, they had, he had ample opportunity to ask questions to him during his cross-examination. And of course he didn't because he really didn't think much, you know, he was ill-prepared as always, but let's listen. Can you briefly describe that training for the jury? Objection, relevant. Overruled the witness may answer. Uh, a lot of the training that I received was on the job from prior inspectors. Prior to this, I was a diesel mechanic. And in addition to that, um, I have ASC and SAE certifications. And not being in, having any interest in cars, what are those certifications? Objection, leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Um, SAE is for the electrical components in a car, basically, for the part that I am certified in. Um, ASE is for the mechanical components, which stands for the Automotive Service Excellence, is what I believe it stands for. What is the purpose of a mechanical inspection? Uh, the purpose of a mechanical inspection is to determine if there was anything that was incorrect, defective, or broken on a vehicle um, prior to the crash that would have caused the vehicle itself to 
cause or contribute to the crash. On December 6, 2021, were you directed to go to the Wisconsin State Crime Lab to view a vehicle? Objection leading. Overruled the witness may answer. It's foundational. Go ahead. Yes. What information did you have prior to going to that location? Objection speculative. Mm -hmm. Overruled the witness may answer. Uh, the information that I was given is that I was to set up an appointment there to look at a uh, Ford Escape that had been involved in a crash in the parade in Waukesha. Did you go to that location on that date? <laughs> yes, I did. Did you do a mechanical inspection of the vehicle that you were sent to look at? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, I did. After performing your inspection, did you draft a report? Yes, I did. And did that report contain the findings of your mechanical inspection from December 6th? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. I provided to you prior to you going up on the stand what's been marked as Stibbet, States Exhibit 83. Do you have that in front of you? Yes. Can you briefly um, identify it for um, how it's labeled, how many pages it consists of? Uh, what exhibit is that? <laughs> exhibit 83. Oh, Lord. It's the uh, Crash Reconstruction Mechanical Inspection Report. The Howell report is Exhibit 83? Correct. Yes. The Howell report. Go ahead. Good I Lord, man. I haven't on it yet, so go ahead and uh, ask your questions. If you're busy. Sir, how many pages does this report consist of? Ten. And that is front and back sides? Correct. Objection. Good Lord. Overruled. The witness may answer. And on the face sheet of Exhibit 83, um, what information does it contain on that as it relates to this investigation? <coughs> um, at the top, it contains a case number and recon number, which match my name, the reconstructionist, and then it begins the report and um, vehicle identification information. And then on the bottom, it's marked with uh, Exhibit number 83. What car were you inspecting? Overruled the witness may answer. 2010 Ford Escape. And what color was it? Objection leading. Overruled, you may answer. Red. And the license plate number associated with that vehicle? A. Adam D. David P. Paul 9256. And on the report, um, the vehicle identification number on Exhibit 83. Um, where did that information come from? The vehicle identification number I verify on the inside of the door jam of the vehicle. Um, it's There's two VINs on each vehicle. One's a public VIN under the windshield and one is inside the door jam of the vehicle. I always use the one inside the door jam of the vehicle first, take note of it, and then cross-reference it with the public VIN on the vehicle to make sure that they both match. And did they in this case? Objection. Uh, I have the 10 pages in. Nowhere on here does it say it's is exhibit. Whoa. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Look at look at him. Do you know how much all of these witnesses, police officers, all these people involved in this foolishness of this clown? He has the damn exhibit. Is he complaining because it's not labeled? Seriously, objection. Okay, let's see what he has to say. Nowhere on here. That's because it was marked for purposes of trial. It has an exhibit sticker now. So your objection's noted. It's overruled. And uh, well, the witness... I'm not privy to the same. The Thank witness you. may answer the question. It's been marked as an exhibit. Oh, Go you ahead, sir. Do you want your I'm sorry. He's Privy to it. Wait, is he pissed because he doesn't have a sticker on it? Oh my god. That is like, oh my god. I don't, you know, I don't have any words right now. Take the question, I forgot what it was. Yeah, I wonder why. I think I did too, but let's go with this one. Poor man. Um, is the, the number that you saw on the door, you said that you cross reference it with the uh, VIN number, public VIN number. Um, did you do that in this case? Yes. And did they match? 
Yes. Does it give a drivetrain description on that first page or front page? Yes, it does. And first of all, I don't know what that means, but um, what is that? Objection. Overrule. The witness may answer. Drivetrain description describes the drive of the vehicle, basically how it's operated on the roadway. So in this case, it's an automatic automatic transmission, doesn't have a clutch, you don't have to shift the gears, and it's front wheel drive, meaning that it's not all wheel drive or rear wheel drive like a pickup truck, it's just front wheel drive. And there, is there a picture on the front of Exhibit 83? Yes. Overruled, the witness may answer. Just a reminder, wait until I rule on any objection. Thank you. Yes. And what is that picture of? It's a picture of the 2010 Escape. That you did the mechanical inspection on? Objection, leave. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Have you had, you authored this report? I did. Have you had a chance to review it since you've authored it? Yes. Is the information contained within this report accurate? Objection. Leave. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, it is. I would ask, I would move States Exhibit 83 into evidence. Objection. Your objection is noted. It is overruled. Exhibit 83 is received. So is my paperwork ever going to say Exhibit 83, or is it just going to be this? Holy Hannah. Mr. Brooks, I'll take that up outside the presence of the jury later, but we're going to continue. It was Go brought ahead. up in front of the jury. Mr. Brooks, we're going to continue with the questioning of this witness. What are you trying to pull over here? Mr. Brooks, please. No one's. The, 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 well, he doesn't like it because his exhibit, which he has in hand, that he accepts for value and returns for value. I mean, most of the crap he, they give him, he doesn't want. And now he's going to bitch about it. Mm. Yeah. Poor thing. It's not fair. Exhibit, to my understanding, has previously been provided to you. You have it. It's now been marked as an exhibit for trial purposes. I don't have the the sticker. It being marked. Go ahead. That's not how it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be fair. Oh man. You mean fair, like all those people you ran over? Yeah, that kind of fair. Yeah, you were such an ass. Narcissistic idiot. Basie, I trust that this was previously turned over. It was, and I believe the defendant has a copy of it in front of him. Thank you. Where does it say continue. exhibit 83? Does it, it doesn't oh, say that this is Again, we'll take this up outside the presence of the jury later. It's not something we need to do right now. Go ahead and ask your questions. Thank you, Your Honor. And I would object and move to strike from the record any commentary that the defendant was making um, in the last five minutes. What was that? That's right. Court will strike the commentary that was made. I'm not sure if it was picked up or not. But as a reminder to the jurors, the statements made by parties and lawyers are not evidence. Um, the testimony and other evidence that's received is the evidence the jury will ultimately consider. Go ahead. Tom Basie. Thank you. Sir, can you briefly describe the condition of the vehicle when you inspected it on December 6th? Uh, yeah, the vehicle had uh, quite a bit of front end damage. The uh, bumper cover was pushed back. The grill was pushed back into the engine bay um, and into the radiator. That was also pushed backwards in towards the engine. The hood was folded up in the air. Both lights were broken out of the front. Um, there was a quite a bit of debris and unknown things stuck to the exterior of the vehicle um, and there was also some damage to the sides of the vehicle. Do you know why you had to go to the Wisconsin State Crime Lab in order to do the inspection? Objection. Um, overrule the witness may answer. I was requested to go to the State Crime Lab to do the inspection because they had not yet completed um, DNA sampling, so until they had it finished, it was going to be retained inside the crime lab. So in the interest of not moving the vehicle again, once they were done with DNA, they had me come to the crime lab to do the testing and inspection. 
So the first section of your report, and I'm just going to direct your attention to page 3 of Exhibit 83, um, talks about the tires and the suspension and tie rods. Do you see that? Objection leading. Yeah, I love that little gay Brooks. The witness may answer. Yes. And can you describe for the jury what part of the inspection, describe this part of the inspection. Objection. Overruled, the witness may answer. The report's been received by the, by the court, and the state may direct the witness to various points at its discretion. When was it made in the city? Because I wasn't aware of that. Oh, for God's sake. Go ahead, Attorney Daisy. You may continue. Wow. Thank you. Sir, can you describe the information contained in the first section of the report under the heading, Tires, Wheels, Steering, Suspension, Brakes? Objection B. Overruled. The witness may answer. So, under this section, it's broken down into four parts. One for... Sorry, I gotta stop for a minute. See, now I see why Brooks wouldn't pay a bit of attention to what this fellow here was saying. Um, because as we will see, as he completes everything, he goes over all of the things that Brooks brought up from the alleged recall. But Brooks is, is um, he needs his pacifier, he needs his diaper changed, and he's so busy being pissed because he didn't get a sticker on his exhibit, on the exhibit, that he's just going to object to everything. So he's not even paying any attention to what this guy is saying, and my guess is he's going to ask some stupid ass questions when it's his, his turn to cross-examinate them, as he would say. <sighs> okay, that felt better. For axle one left, which is the driver's side front axle. The left side would refer to it as you're sitting in the vehicle facing forward. Um, the right side would refer to the passenger side. So axle one is the frontmost axle. Axle two is the rearmost, left and right. And it breaks each individual um, wheel end component systems down. And then from that, I take each one apart and inspect them thoroughly, brakes, tires, steering components on the front axle, obviously, suspension condition, and anything else that's at the wheel end that I can inspect. And did you do that in this case? Yes. What observations did you make? Um, first, on axle one left, which would be the driver's side front, <laughs> the tie rod end was worn. Um, about an eighth of an inch of play in the tie rod end in the ball joint itself. So when you turn the steering wheel or turn the wheel, there was a little bit of play in the tie rod. Still attached, um, still intact, still functioning, still able to steer the vehicle, but just worn to the point that it needed replacement before it got any worse. Was that something that would create any problems in operating the car, for example, on November 21st, 2021? Objection, speculative. Overruled, this witness may answer. He's been, um, hold on. He's been qualified under 907-02. Um, I direct your attention to 907-02 through 907-07, Mr. Brooks. Go ahead. Um, okay, so you can be that name. And that's referring to a specific Blah, blah. Name. How do we know that's not speculation? Um, the, um, she just referred you to what to look at. So you just need to stretch your pie hole. The objection is noted. It's overruled. The witness may answer. It would not. The vehicle would still steer and drive just the same as any other vehicle. Shut it up. would just have play in the Gosh. steering wheel, and it would make a little bit of a clunking noise potentially when you turn the wheel. You would maybe hear a clunking noise from that left front tire. Again, operationally, the person driving that car would have any trouble steering based upon that issue? <laughs> not at all. Okay. What other observations did you make? Um, other observations I made were that all the tires were evenly worn on all four axle ends. Um, the, I believe it was the left rear, yep, the left rear axle, the tire on that axle was bigger than the other three. So there's also a chart referenced later in my report that shows the difference between the two 
Um, the tires that are recommended to be on the vehicle are size 235-70-R16, which was what was equipped on the vehicle except on the left rear, which was 245-75-R16, which is one full size bigger in dimension and aspect ratio. What if any impact would that have on how a person's ability to drive that vehicle? So. Uh, one size bigger in tire is usually not the end of the world, being that it's the single tire, it can have an effect, but it's on the rear of the vehicle. Being a front wheel drive vehicle, the speeds are reported off of the front axle of that vehicle. So that's where the speedometer would get its speeds from. Um, the only time it would be notable would be during a heavy ABS brake application. And that would be at a higher rate of speed with full brake application where the ABS system kicks in on the vehicle. That's where it, would, it could be noticeable. And by could be, I mean the sizes are very similar. They're about an inch and a half in difference. Revolutions per mile are not that far apart. The ABS system might not even pick up a difference between the two. When you say at higher speeds, are we talking, what are we talking? Uh, we higher speed. speed. Overrule the witness by answer. Higher speeds, I mean something like highway speeds, 55 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour or greater. Any other observations made with regard to in that area? The only other observations that I made were that um, all the brakes were in good working condition mm -hmm. and had adequate thickness left on the brake pads um, for stopping of the vehicle. All four brakes were in good working shape. And ah, hear that? Hear that, Brooks? I bet you he won't hear that. Or he will pretend like he doesn't hear. The brakes were okay. So you could have put on your brakes and the vehicle would have stopped. Imagine that. We're able to be locked at the time of inspection. So and I, I, let me clarify if I didn't ask you this. Um, the information you were provided was that this vehicle was involved in a crash? Objection. Nice and nice. Um, overruled, uh, given the oh. nature of the testimony being provided, uh, she, the statement clarify that. So go ahead, you may answer. Yes. Look and did that. you, do you know the baby. date of that crash? Uh, I know it was in November. I don't know the exact date. Oh, thank you. So with regards to the braking system, was there anything... Did you find anything at all in your inspection of that vehicle that would have caused the brakes not to work or not to work effectively on the date of the crash or prior to the crash? Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. No, I did not. Actually, since your inspection took place after the crash, would that be your same answer with regard to as it was on December 6, 2021? There were no brake problems. Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. <clears throat> that is correct. The brake still functioned at the time of inspection fully. What was the next area that you then inspected? The next area that I inspected was the electronic system um, and general cabin system of the vehicle, cabin being where the occupants sit inside of the vehicle. Um, did that by examining light bulbs on the exterior of the vehicle and then systematically working my way into the vehicle where I could. What observations did you make in that area? Um, both headlights were, um, the lenses were damaged but the lights were still working. Um, the lights were in the high beam position and in the automatic <coughs> position from the driver's cabin. What does that indicate? Objection leading. So that indicates that when the vehicle was left at the last time that the vehicle headlights were in the automatic position, meaning that if it's dark enough out that the headlights would turn themselves on, and the selector stick was in the high beam position, meaning that the last time the lights were in use, they were in high beam mode. Thank you. Continue on. Um, from there, uh, just examine the throttle linkage. Um, horn and the other driver controls from inside the cabin. So let's talk about the throttle controls. First of all, what is that? So the, the, um, overruled, the witness may answer. Everyone's familiar with the throttle pedal in the vehicle. You press the pedal, 
makes the vehicle accelerate. From there, on this specific vehicle, it's an electronic signal that is transferred from the throttle pedal to the throttle body on the vehicle's engine on the intake. Um, that electrical signal opens a butterfly valve, which allows more air and fuel into the engine, speeds the engine up. If you let off the throttle, it reduces and closes that valve. On this particular vehicle, um, I checked the throttle pedal first inside the cab. It was free moving, no binding, no obstructions. I was able to smoothly press it to the floor and release it, and it acted just as it should. Uh, from there, I went under the hood of the vehicle. On this particular vehicle, the crime lab asked that I did not open the hood just because of the amount of DNA evidence on the front of the vehicle. They didn't want me to come in contact awful, with guys. anything. Awful. So they asked that I not open the hood if at all possible, which on this vehicle, I was able to still access the throttle because of the way the hood was bent up in the air. I was able to actually reach in from the side of the vehicle and access the throttle body components through the damaged hood portion where I normally would not have been able to reach. Um, from there, I was able to look at the exterior of the throttle and everything was in clean, clear working condition, no visible damage, no visible issues. I removed the intake tubing from the engine and inspected the actual throttle plate itself, which was in the closed position. The closed position indicates either an idle or that the vehicle is turned off. I was able to then actuate the butterfly valve itself from fully closed to fully open. And when I released it, it went back to fully closed, just as designed by Ford. Did there appear to be any problems with the throttle? No, there was not. I'm just going to, I know you call it a throttle, I call it a gas pedal. It's one and the same, correct? Correct. Um, sustained us to the form of the question. Please rephrase. What is the difference between a gas pedal and a throttle? Oh, Lord. Nothing. Thank you. <laughs> You can take your notes with your little pin inside. What was the next area? The next area I went on to was the uh, seat belts inside the vehicle. And then from there, I actually was able to test the vehicle for function. Did you then come to a conclusion section of your report? I did. And is that starting on page 5 of 10? Yes. Okay. Hmm. Um, did you check the power steering system? I did. And what observations do you make of that? Aside from the uh, ball joint that was loose that I described earlier, the entire rest of the power steering system was intact and functioning properly. So there are no problems that would cause the car not to steer appropriately? Objection. Leading. Sustain this to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Did you observe any problems that would... Did you observe any problems with regard to the steering? Aside from the ball joint, no. Thank you. Now, in your report, you indicate a gross vehicle weight rating. Did you see that on page 5 of 10? Objection, rather missing. Overrule the witness may answer. Yes, I do. What is that? The gross vehicle weight rating is the amount of weight that the vehicle can physically carry safely, and that number is administered by the manufacturer. So that includes people within that car, is that what you're saying? Objection. Overrule, the witness may answer based upon his training and experience. Yes, that would include all vehicle, uh, the vehicle weight, occupants, and cargo. And the curb weight, what is that? I mean, generally, what is it now? Objection leading. Overrule, the witness may answer based upon his training and experience. The curb weight of the vehicle is the weight of the vehicle as it rolls off the floor at the assembly plant. And that's without fuel and um, coolant and oil and things like that. And it's a dry weight of the vehicle. It's what the vehicle itself with nothing in it physically weighs. Okay. Thank you. If someone had reported hearing a clicking sound, 
while this car was driving in front of them, was there anything that you found in your report that would be consistent with a clicking sound being heard? Objection, hearsay. Overruled, the witness may answer. There was a lot of damage to the front of the vehicle. Um, it would be impossible to say what a clicking noise could come from, um, being as there's a lot of moving components under the hood with belt pulley, um, the engine fan, things like that. Anything could be stuck in a tire. It would be impossible to say if there would be a clicking noise from this vehicle. I was actually not able to drive it physically to test it. I was only able to just start it. Can I ask why you were unable to drive it? Objection. <laughs> Overruled. The witness may answer. Uh, there's actually two reasons I was unable to drive it. One, again, with DNA evidence on the exterior of the vehicle. Oh. Two, there wasn't enough gas in the vehicle to move it. Hmm. So the car was unempty when you when you observed it? Objection. Leading. Sustained us to the form of the question. How much gas was in the car when you inspected it? Um, Objection. Leading. Ask the answer. Um, overruled the witness may answer. Oh, you're so snappy. There was Back off. The, the gauge read E for empty, and the notation on the infotainment center originally said two miles to empty, and then on the second key cycle it said one mile to empty. When you said key cycle, when you started it, what or when you turned the key, what observations of A did you make? Objection B. Overruled the witness may answer. So when I tried to start the vehicle, it was very sluggish. It turned over, but it wouldn't fire, it wouldn't do anything. And then it made like a hiccup sound, like it was going to try to start mimicking basically a vehicle that's out of fuel. And when I tried turning the key again, then the vehicle actually did start, did idle, and did run like it was supposed to. Um, that's when I saw that the fuel gauge, the distance to empty gauge, went from two miles to one mile indicating that the vehicle was very much so out of fuel almost. And um, I recorded this with my camera and I tapped the throttle to do a rev test on the engine. The engine revved and went back to an idle. When it went back to an idle the second time, it then sputtered and turned off. Which would indicate what? It would indicate that it's not getting enough fuel to run correctly. Thank you. Now, if a witness had testified that when the vehicle went in front of them, they heard uh, a high pitch, like a rubbing sound. Um, based upon your examination, what would that be consistent with? Objection, hearsay. Overruled the witness, may answer. Um, there's a lot of different things that could cause that. It could be heavy acceleration from someone pressing the throttle on a vehicle. Hmm. It could be noise that is amplified as because the um, engine bay is now open to the exterior, so you can hear the engine noises coming from the engine bay of the vehicle. Um, it could be an exhaust-related item. It could be a lot of different things, to be honest. When you were doing an examination of the undercarriage of the vehicle, <clears throat> did you observe a muffler? No, I did not. I want to show you what's been previously mm -hmm. admitted, Exhibit 73. It'll show on the screen in front of you, and I'd ask that it be published as well. Objection, leading. Um, Overall, okay. permission to publish 73. Sir, do you see the, the picture that's um, marked Exhibit 73? It's not actually marked, but it is Exhibit 73. Uh oh. I do. What is depicted in that photograph? Objection. Speculative. Um, overall, based on his training and experience, the witness may answer. That it appears to be an exhaust muffler and a couple chunks of wood and overturned dirt. The muffler that's observed in this picture, would that be um, consistent or inconsistent with um, a 2010 Ford Escape? Objection. Speculative. <laughs> Overruled. This witness may answer and provide an opinion. Go ahead. By just looking at a picture. Overruled, the witness may answer. You can cross-examine the witness about that, sir. No, I'm Go ahead. Y'all are trying to pull a fast one. Mm -hmm. It is a vehicle muffler without seeing the ends of it and where the inlet, outlet are, and actual measurements, it would be impossible to see what vehicle it came from, but it did. it is an automotive muffler. <laughs> and sir, at the end of your inspection, do you come to a conclusion with regard to the mechanical fitness of this vehicle? 
I do. And what was that conclusion? Um, my conclusion was that the tie rod on the left front end of the vehicle that's responsible for steering the joint was worn and had been worn prior to the crash. Um, this is not something that just happens immediately or overnight. If it would have been due to crash damage that this was damaged, I would expect to have seen a lot more impact in that area with bent metal or distorted items. Um, the tie rods are very tough parts, so that to me indicates that it was worn prior to the crash occurring and the tire, um, obviously unless somebody changed it in between the crash occurring and my inspection, the, the tire was the, the different size than the other three um, prior to the crash and it had been driven like that. Um, I did not see any issues from the tire rod affecting steering as far as it relates to the alignment of the vehicle. Once things are worn and they start to get excessively worn, they manifest themselves in incorrect tire wear. A tire might chop or feather. That was not present on this vehicle. Um, had the left rear tire been an issue on the vehicle, I would have expected to see that manifest itself in an ABS, um, which is an anti-lock brake system failure or a trouble code in the vehicle. When I ran the vehicle and with the key in the ignition and the on position, there were no diagnostic trouble codes present on this vehicle indicating any issue whatsoever. And two things that I, I guess I need to cover. Do you check to see if there are any recalls in the vehicle in coming to your conclusion? Uh, you Objection, speculative, and do we still need this exhibit? Wow. See, this is what's interesting. See, he's not focusing on that. She's asking him about recalls. He can't focus on it, and it, it, he's annoyed because his exhibit is still up. You know, I'm just going to say here, if he's really, really serious about saving himself, which, of course, there is no saving. We already know this. But this would definitely be the time, instead of worrying about what's fair and what's not fair and uh, if he doesn't have a sticker on the exhibit or, oh my goodness, you know, whatever. Um, he would have been studying this and tried to think of some of his gotcha questions, which are never good. But he's not going to. He's not even, he's not focused on that. He is never focused on the right thing. I'm just saying, this would be the time. She's asking about the recalls. And even though he was trying to pull fast one, as he accused them of at the end, you know, with whatever alleged recall there was, this would have been the time. And that is why Attorney Basie had said, when he brought it up, and Judge Doro, that he had ample opportunity on his redirect. No, not redirect, sorry. Cross-examination of him. But nope, he's gonna, he's not even focusing on it. Oh, thank you. We can take that down, and your objections noted. It's overruled. The witness may answer. At least tap in the for recalls, yes. Were there any on this vehicle? There were not recalls on this vehicle. There was only an extended um, service warranty from Ford, which had since elapsed due to the mileage on the vehicle. Now, you talked about the brake system in terms of the, the brake pedal within the car and its. Um, that was operating correctly. Do you recall that testimony? Objection, leading. Overruled. It's foundational. So the witness may answer. Yes, I do. Now, when a, a person activates that brake pedal, what is happening within the car? Um, there's actually a lot of things that happen within the car when you activate the brake pedal. Um, when you press the brake pedal, um, it pushes on a it's called a push rod, but it actually pulls on it. It pulls on the rod, which goes into the brake master cylinder, and that master cylinder is what pumps hydraulic fluid from the um, brake fluid reservoir to each independent wheel on this vehicle. It's equipped with anti-lock brakes. It goes through an ABS modulator first. Um, from there, it sends a signal out to stop or slow down, depending on the amount of pressure that you apply inside the cab. Depends on how much braking force you get at the wheel ends. 
um, in a very heavy brake application, as I have discussed before, where the vehicle is still trying to uh, maintain momentum, the ABS system can override, and that's where you would get the vibration in the pedal that many of you may have felt before. That's your ABS system doing its job, not allowing the wheels to lock themselves up. What it's actually doing is pulsating the fluid in the vehicle. Now, when you talk about brake pads, um, how do the brake pads, where are they located, and how do they relate to the pressing down of a brake pedal? Objection leading. Overrule the witness for the answer. So when the brake fluid reaches the, <laughs> each wheel end, there's a set of calipers, pistons, and those pistons actually come out and they act like a clamp and they squeeze the two brake pads together. They're located between the two sides of the piston and on the exterior of the brake rotor. And what that does is it creates a pinching motion and that pinching motion slows the rotation of the disc down, which is the brake disc, which is attached to the wheel hub. And that's what slows your vehicle. And just for the record, he was using his right hand uh, to demonstrate kind of a squeezing motion. He had it, and I would describe his hand in a C motion, maybe three to four inches between the thumb and the fingers, and then pressing together a couple of inches. Go ahead. Are there any other components to the braking system um, in a car. Objection leading. Overall. There's a parking brake system in the vehicle. But other than that, so you've covered every aspect of the braking system in this particular vehicle, is that correct? Objection. Spank me to you. Overall, the witness may answer. Yes, I have. Did you observe anything, anything at all, that would have prohibited this vehicle from stopping if the brake pedal had been applied? No. <laughs> Big baby. No, I'm sorry. Little baby. 140 pounds of you. Click, click, click. The pin insert. Is there anything... Excuse me. That you sorry. See, he's just zoning out. He looks up for two reasons. He either looks up, and I don't know what's on that ceiling. I don't know if there's post-its up there or what. But, like, when he's trying to think of something brilliant, it's almost like, you know, the answers are going to fall upon him or the questions, the, the clever questions, which you better stop looking up because I haven't, he hasn't come up with any yet. But he'll look up for that, and also he'll be, um, it's like a, a, a defiant child, you know, he's putting his head up. And he's kind of blocking out the world, and he looks mad. Um, yeah, I've had kids do that with him before. And this is the part where he should really be paying attention so he can come up with some smart questions. This is the, you know, this is, he doesn't care, though. He doesn't care. Look at him. It's ridiculous. Okay, here we go. You observed or documented with it during or in your mechanical inspection report that would have contributed to this, the crash shiz that this car was involved in? Objection, I said yes. Former rule, though, can we ask my answer? No. Thank you. Right, thank you. Any uh, cross exams? You get him, he's so mad. He's going to let that. inspection, did you see any bully holes? Yes, I did. Bully holes. Bully holes. Back up. Do you recall how many bully holes you observed? I do not recall a number of them. No, I knew there were more than one. The ones that you observed, do you recall where they were? I do believe one might have exited through either the windshield or the rear window and one was in the side of the vehicle if I remember correctly. And did you find any shell cases? No, I did not. And you said you did the inspection on December 6th? That's correct. Uh, do you know if the, if the vehicle had been uh, uh, do you know if anyone attempted to start the vehicle in between that time of the crash and your inspection? Not to my knowledge, no. But you don't know for sure? That's correct. <clears throat> uh, you made reference.
reference to the left rear tire being uh, being bigger than, than the other tires? Yes. Can you give a little bit more clarity on uh, how that would affect the vehicle? So one larger tire on the vehicle would obviously make the vehicle lean ever so slightly away from whichever side is larger than the other. Um, in this case, the amount of difference between the two tires, it's about an inch and a half in difference in radius. So in radius, you get half of that amount in height. So it'd be about three quarters of an inch difference in height. That amount of difference is not noticeable in a vehicle. Um, the other thing that it would cause is premature tire wear from one side to the other um, over time to where one vehicle, that one tire might wear faster than the other. Um, the suspension might not act correctly because it's, it's not at the same ride height anymore. So eventually over time, those are things I would expect to potentially see from that. Each vehicle acts differently with different size tires on it. There's no one size fits all. So different vehicles act differently it, to uh, to having a, a bigger fitting tire. Yes. Uh, you made reference to it uh, to the uh, to a vehicle leaning away from the side that's bigger. Or Correct. Would that in any way create a slight pull to the vehicle to either side? In my experience, that small amount would not know. And you made reference to the high beams. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly what you said referring to the high beams. Uh, I guess you made reference to them being used at some point? The high beams were activated when I did my inspection, meaning that um, when the headlights are on, they were in high beam mode. The um, selector stick was pressed forward for the high beams. high beams usually a driver uses high beams to see better or to illuminate things better so it, that would primarily refer to if it was nighttime correct would you say with your expertise it wouldn't make sense for a vehicle to use high beams in the daytime And what are some of the uses from, from your knowledge? Sorry about my coughing. What does this have to do with anything? Now it would be important to have the high beams on at night, which I do recall, I believe, um, the victims or witnesses for victims saying they did see the headlights coming. So, but I guess, you know, I don't know what, why is he worrying about what's happening in the daytime with him? I don't know, maybe I'm missing it. I'm sure it's some genius question I didn't think of. Generally, um, the high beams shine brighter, so even with sunlight shining on them, um, other vehicles can see them. It's a thing that we use on the highway as law enforcement sometimes. Um, we'll use the high beams at a crash scene. We'll turn the high beams on so oncoming traffic coming in during the daytime sees that brighter light from the vehicle. It's just a little bit of a thing to help oncoming vehicles see. So, so it would essentially be for the identification purpose? Not so much for identification, no. Well, what do you mean when you refer to um, 
for oncoming traffic to be able to more for visibility is what I mean so that it stands out to the other traffic it doesn't look like it belongs because the lights look very bright it gets the other driver's attention the same as the red and blue lights on the top of the cars it gets them to notice that law enforcement is present correct Ooh, that's, good... that's what I meant by ID purpose for them to be able to well it didn't make any sense to see. Then. Mm -hmm. then yes good job genius able to inspect the entire engine? I was not able to inspect the entire engine. And what parts of the what parts of the engine were you not able to inspect? Um, the only parts that I was unable to inspect would be down in the front by the belt pulleys area. I could see that the radiator was pushed into it, but I couldn't see what components had been damaged by that. Um, as far as like water pump or anything like that um, and I do not usually take the engines down meaning I don't take them apart as part of my inspection anyways um, my main under the hood inspection components would be non-engine related aside from the throttle you made reference to the water pump did you notice any water leaking uh, yes there was coolant that had leaked from the vehicle from the water pump I don't know where it actually had leaked from, but I know that there was a lack of coolant in the vehicle. It could have come from a lot of various different places. It was no longer leaking when I saw it. It was empty. So you didn't actually observe it leaking? Correct. So it'd be fair to say you don't know where the leaking came from. That's correct. Were you told that the vehicle was leaking? No, it just has a low coolant level, meaning it leaked from someplace or it had never been filled properly. So at that time, it'd be fair to say you weren't sure if it had been filled properly or if it was leaking. Either is possible. But it'd be fair to say you didn't know for sure which of the two. Correct. You know what? I just, I'm so irritated by Brooke's total attitude, which is all the time. But, you know, this man is experienced and what he's doing. He's nice. He's being very, and it's all, Brooks is always like, but you don't know for sure. You don't know for sure. Ugh. How do I count the ways that this man is disgusting? Uh, you made reference to a loose ball joint. Um, can you give a little bit more clarity on it? exactly what is a ball joint so the ball joint is at the wheel end when you turn your steering wheel in your vehicle there's a shaft attached to the wheel it goes down to a rack and pinion system the pinion is a round gear the rack is a flat piece of metal with gear teeth on it as you turn it pushes the tie rods left and right as you turn left and right on the end of each of those tie rods is a ball and socket joint much like um the hip joint on a human being. It's a ball that fits inside of a socket. And what that does is it allows the wheel to turn left and right as it's being pushed by the tie rod without any binding or any issues in between. That is clarity. I, I don't know anything about cars, so. And you said there was a loose ball joint? Yes, the left front was loose. And to what effect could that affect the vehicle? 
uh, the amount that it was loose, it would only wear more with more use. Um, as those components start to wear down, they start to have a little play. The longer the vehicle is operated without proper repairs, the worse the play gets. Um, the worse the play gets, then you can start having issues with um, improper tire wear and so on and so forth until it gets to the point that it actually separates the ball and socket themselves will separate from each other. And then what happens at that point? If the ball and socket joints separate, um, you would lose steering at that wheel. The other wheel would still be able to steer. From your inspection, can you tell how roughly how long this loose or this ball joint was loose? I cannot tell exactly how long, no. I can say that it was loose before the crash occurred just based on the fact that it was worn, not broken. So with your expertise, would it be fair to say that that needed to be taken care of? Yes, that needed to be corrected. You made reference to the gas. Um, <coughs> the, the vehicle having difficulty starting. Would that be fair to say? Yes. TikTok, Brooks, come on. Come up with your next brilliant question. And um, reference to the axles, you, you made reference to. Uh, taking them off the vehicle? The axle I do not take off of the vehicle at all. Uh, what did you do in regards to the axle? The axle ends, wheel ends, that's where the brake components are mounted. So I remove the wheel and tire from the actual axle end. I think that's what I was referring to. Okay. I'm sorry if I misquoted. I know you made some reference to removing something. I, I just assume you meant the axle. Um, mm -hmm. When you inspect the axle and remove, you said the wheel? Yes. Um, what, what is being inspected at that point? Um, so when I remove the wheel and tire from the vehicle, I remove all four of them one at a time. And that's where I actually look at the brake components themselves, being the brake pads, the brake calipers, um, pistons inside the caliper, brake rotors, um, and then I get a better view of the tie rod that I was just speaking about because it's actually next to the wheel on the axle end of the vehicle. You said the tire tire rod? The tie rod ball joint that was loose. Oh, okay. So what... So, I think you just were clear about ball joint and tire rod is, is the difference between the two yes the ball mm. joint is the the joint itself and it's on the end of the tie rod did you notice anything wrong with the tire rod the actual tire rod not the ball joint no there was nothing wrong with the tie rod mm.
just one second. I'm just looking over these notes. Mm -hmm. okay. Should have been prepared. Right there where everybody's waiting. Mm -mm -mm. On uh, page nine of your report. And you did give some clarity to this. I'm just <laughs> curious to know. On page nine. Well, first of all, you, you wrote this report yourself, correct? Yes. Oh, Lord. Here we go. With the reports. On page nine, the second sentence. Um, I'm assuming you still have the Zibi 83. Yes, sir. It says, I noted a worn tie rod end on the left front wheel end. Was was that in reference to the ball joint and not the tie rod? Yes. They're, they're one and the same. The tie rod end is a ball joint. It's two different ways to refer to the same component. Okay, I was... Clarity. It's, it doesn't say ball joint right here. Would that be fair to say? Correct. Ooh, that was brilliant. Doesn't say ball joint. Fair to say. And what is the the high mount brake lamp? The high mount brake lamp is on the back of the vehicle. You have the right brake light and turn signal, left brake light and turn signal, and then there's the third brake light that's up, like usually in the rear window or at the top of the back of the hatch of the vehicle. That's the high mount brake lamp. Okay. And it was inoperable when you inspected it? That's correct. Both of those were inoperable during inspection. So they did work? Correct. So it'd be fair to say if someone was viewing the vehicle from behind, they would be able to see because those were inoperable? Yes, at the time of inspection, those lights did not work. Also stated that it, it is unknown if they were working prior to the crash or damaged during the crash. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. That you would you would know either way. No, I would not have a way to tell when that light bulb <laughs> went out. further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Great. Before you do that, I'm just going to have my jury stand for a second. Go ahead.
साथ एक एक पीस ही Now, sir, just going back again to this ball joint, you stated that, I guess, was your testimony in cross-examination that <clears throat> unless the ball and socket is separated, you can still safely operate that vehicle? Objection. This characterizes what was said. Well, based on the form of the question, I'll allow the witness to answer. Yes. <clears throat> and the ball and the socket on this vehicle, were they separated? They were not. Now, your inability to fully inspect the engine, I want to direct you to that area of the vehicle. Does the engine control acceleration? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled, the witness may answer. No, it requires driver input. Does the engine control braking? No, it does not. Does the engine control steering? Objection. With the relevancy. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. No, it does not. Does the engine control gear shifting? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. It does not. Finally, sir, you had talked about um, actually coolant or some type of water. I wasn't sure if you're talking about the water pump or the radiator. Do you know what was leaking, if anything? Objection. Action answered during cross. Well, overruled the witness may answer. It's redirect. Um, yes, yeah, so water pump, water coolant, it's all interchangeable um, as far as the cooling system for the engine goes. And the coolant system was low at the time of inspection and had been leaking, but from where, I do not know. And again, does that control... The steering? No. The braking? No. The acceleration? No. Finally, sir, you had talked about on cross-examination the presence of the high beams being on during the daylight. Do you recall that line of questioning? Yes. Specifically, you had indicated that sometimes the state patrol uses their high beams during the day. What was that for? Objection. That was answered. Overruled. The witness may answer. It's redirect. Yeah. To increase visibility. Is that of any assistance if a vehicle is coming up behind people? Objection. Speculative. Based on his training and experience, I will allow him to answer. No. So there. Thank you. Nothing further. All right. Thank you. You may step down. What's wrong with you, Brooks? You got a headache, baby. What is he so frustrated about? And, um, once the witness passes, I'll excuse the jury for an afternoon break. It's uh, just about 3.06. We'll take about 15 minutes. I'll rise for the jury. Look at you, you're all suspicious, aren't you? They're pulling some fast ones, aren't they? Fast maneuvers. Nah, not really. You can be seated. Oh, come on, sit down. I can't. Mr. Burks, I know the last thing you said, I heard you say it. That's hilarious. What were you referring to? I was referring to, uh, like, are you serious? Some of the same, some of the same things that I asked on uh, when, when it's my time to question the witness. 
to be overruled. But when the same thing is done, an object, it's not, it's not, it's just, it's just thrown, it's just thrown to the side. I just, I just think that's funny. Well, I sir, really do. I don't find it funny. Number one, uh, number two. Um, You're not in my the, position either. The court rules on the objections at the time that the objections are made. I know, and I wanted to address this briefly. You can have a seat. Um, you had questioned during the testimony of this witness, um, Exhibit 83, um, because I believe what you were saying is, and you can tell me if I'm wrong on this, uh, the copy of the report you have does not have an exhibit sticker on it. It does. Right. And, um, <laughs> the, what, you want to see it? I, I don't. You know what? Nobody cares. I can't believe he's making such a big... Yeah, look at that expression. That's right. That's the expression he needs. It is just mind-boggling, to use his words. I mean, all this thing that has put his little tiny panties in a wad, that's because he didn't get the sticker on his thing. He thinks everything is so unfair. He really has not grasped how much this judge, how much leeway she's given him, how much the, the prosecution has helped him through this whole thing. He doesn't, he doesn't get it. He doesn't really understand about, um, what am I trying to say? Appreciating kindness because he doesn't know how to bestow it on people himself. He doesn't understand it. So his brain can't fathom people being kind to him, I suppose. All he can think about is what's fair, what's not fair. And a little sticker on the thing is, wow. I can't even imagine these families during this time watching him complain about something like that when they have lost so much due to his attack. But let's see what we got going on moving forward. Doubt that your copy does not have an exhibit sticker uh, because at the time the report was provided to you, uh, and I'll have the state correct me if I'm wrong on this, uh, it would have been provided uh, through the course of discovery, I'd also note that on April, I believe, 22nd of 2022, the state filed a notice of expert naming uh, Inspector uh, Ryan Schultz as an expert witness and indicated it, that he would testify consistent with his uh, report. And then I directed your attention to um, the statutes and the rules of evidence dealing with expert testimony, specifically uh -huh. starting at 907.02 mm -hmm. through 907.07. Um, that is why I didn't stop during the testimony to have a discussion outside the presence of the jury uh, because at that point, um, the objection to not having an exhibit sticker on your report is not um, would not prevent the court from receiving the exhibit once the proper foundation was laid, which in my opinion it was. And the fact that your document didn't have that specific exhibit sticker um, doesn't diminish the fact that um, I know from your cross-examination you were referring to the report. At times you referred to it by page number. It was clear from your questioning mm -hmm. that you had reviewed it. I would just note two examples. Uh, you asked some questions regarding visibility and the impact of the high beams. That was one example. And then secondly, uh, questioning him about the ball joint and whether it needed attention and what that would mean. Um, and so that I just it, wanted that to make from the report, Your Honor. The a record thing of that. that came from the report was from page nine when I was trying to get clarity about why it said worn tire tie rod. 
Oh, and you actually questioned the witness about yeah, let the her finish. Uh, different tire and what that would mean. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought three uh, good areas of cross-examination uh, that you covered. As far as the other issues I think that you might have when there's redirect, um, I, I'm not going to explain what redirect is, sir, but again, for my position, um, there's direct examination, there's cross-examination, the state or any witness, any party that calls a witness always has the opportunity to ask the direct exam questions and then redirect based upon. Oh my gosh, this is what I hate. I hate, I detest, I loathe when he puts his head way up in the air. Like I said, there's only two reasons that I have noticed. You all can tell me you've noticed it differently. When he puts his head, yes, that's way too far back. He looks like a damn fool. But he'll put it up like if he's looking all arrogant and, and looking, I guess, for answers from the imaginary post-its on the wall. The other one, and I feel like when he puts his head up like that, that body language there, well, I'm no body language expert, but I'm just going to say he looks like an idiot, but we'll get beyond that. He is just, you know, he's tuning it out. He's letting them know, I'm not, nope, I'm mad. I'm not going to listen. Nope, I'm tuning you out. I'm not going to make eye contact. I'm not going to listen. I'm going to look like an idiot. Just unbelievable. Mind-boggling. What's asked during cross-examination. Sometimes that does mean there's some repetition, uh, but I didn't see anything through the redirect of this witness that I thought was in improper. Um, so I just wanted to make a record of that. I am going to caution you, sir. Do you understand um, what I was you saying? Are, no, we don't care. But you, during multiple times during the questioning of that witness, you were mumbling under your breath. Yes. Um, you say disparaging remarks toward the court, toward the witness, or toward the process. Yes. So if it was disparaging, what did I say? Sir, you say things like it's not fair, or you go, you make noises that suggest like you're disgusted with the ruling that is made. So you're assuming what I mean by that, and when did Mr. I say Mr. Brooks, I'm just making a record because yeah, it's you're, important you're making an that incorrect record. Oh wow, I love an incorrect record. Everybody could hear him. Everybody could hear him. That's right. Look, I love her expression. I don't know how she hadn't just like come across her desk and just punched him out because he was, he was, he was, man, he was so mad because he didn't have the sticker and everything. Everything is really so unfair to him. But yeah, he, um, everybody could hear him. Okay, here we go. It's important that you demonstrate courtesy and decorum through these proceedings and that you give respect to the witnesses who are testifying in the process. Um, Did the witness feel disrespected? Wow. Did the witness say anything about feeling disrespected? Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to engage in this. Because I don't think he did. Forth. Okay, I'm going to say because the witness doesn't have. Officer, is it Officer Schultz? I'll make sure I make the correction if I didn't address the first part of his name. Um, he has too much class. And decorum to not say something during a trial. Everybody else does except Brooks. And so, yeah, he's 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 got an attitude. Not Officer Schultz, but Darrell. Did he feel this? Well, he didn't say anything. What's he gonna say? I feel disrespected, or you're making disparaging remarks. My gosh, so unbelievable. With you, because first of all, it's a mischaracterization of my observations. Number one, and yeah, number but your two, observations are job. incorrect. It's wow. my job to wow. ensure that the under nine hundred six eleven that there's the effective presentation, uh, and I'll just refer you to that once again. I'll read it. 
uh, into the record. Well, no need to read. And watch that, because he's a know-it-all. Yep, he's, I'm sorry I'm interrupting, but that's okay. Y'all get it. And most of y'all get it. I'll irritate a few of you, but y'all be all right. Trust me. Um, yep. He's going to, he's like, doo, 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 doo. he doesn't want to listen. He doesn't want to listen. And I'll be surprised if his head is way up in the air again. Because he's just tuning it out. He is the only one. He can't stand that these women are so much smarter than he is. He can't stand it. He deep down knows it, but he would never, ever admit it. Okay. Come on. Here we go. Under 906, just make sure 11, that you make a correct the judge shall exercise record. reasonable control over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses and presenting evidence to us to do all of the time. following. Make the interrogation and presentation effective for the ascertainment yep, of truth. Sure. Avoid needless consumption of time. Protect witnesses from harassment or undue embarrassment. It go, sub 2 talks about the scope of cross-examination. Sub 3 talks about leading questions and when leading questions may be used uh, to develop the witness's testimony. Um, so with that, we'll take our break. I'll start the 15 minutes. It's 3.13. We are in recess. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, again, um, well, he is so rude. You know, he can sit there and run his gator. Can, can any of us forget the 50-minute rant and then all the drama he causes almost every single day at the beginning of court about his ICF papers, his inmate communication forms, and I think I had mistakenly called them inmate complaint forms. Well, now, for Brooks and Brooks alone, I have a new name, and I will now be referring to them as idiot complaint forms because that's what they are. Okay. Here we go. Actually take note of um, when the court overruled one of um, Mr. Brooks' objections, his uh, response was, stop name, trying right. to be slick. Yeah, I did say that. Yeah, he did say it. I heard so, it too. Just for the record, I thought that that was very disrespectful. Thank you. Yeah, I would agree. agree. You get him, Basie. Yeah, we discussed scheduling at some point as well, either now or on the return. We'll come back. Why oh, wasn't that addressed uh, right when it happened? Honestly, Mr. Brooks, really trying hard because not to that, highlight that's the, that's your the misconduct trying to be slick. during the trial. I'm trying my best here to, frankly, minimize pointing those it. things out to the jury and instead pointing them out it. outside the presence of the jury. You may have noticed I've even started to say I'd remind the jurors that the comments of the parties or the attorneys are not evidence so as to cast a broad brush and not simply highlight your conduct. I haven't noticed anything. And I'm, um, I'm but all right, we're in recess. Thing yeah, blah, blah, blah. Well, he's in. If you're going to be biased, then somebody. Yeah. Yeah, one thing she is guilty of is her biasedness. Wow. Things can only get worse from this. Amazing. So, in ending this big video, what better way than to freeze it on him looking so absolutely disgusted with the whole system and the unfairness. We all know that's up rock of crap. Anyhow, I hope y'all enjoyed this. Um, I've really been enjoying reading your comments. And just a note on comments, if I ever miss any of yours, I apologize. I really try very hard um, to read every single one that I might one might slip past me. Um, but I do try. Sometimes I'll respond. Sometimes I'll give a heart or both. But when you have a heart, you know that I've read it. Now, sometimes I may have read it and I didn't give you a heart. Just want to let you know that, that your comments and what you have to say are very important to me. And as far as responding to them, it could be anywhere from a day to a week, just depending on what's happening in my life, because I really enjoy it. But 
you know, things pop up and so it might. So I would say even at the most two weeks, but hopefully at least by a week. But I just want to let you know that because they are very important to me and I appreciate them. And without you, I couldn't be doing this. So thanks again so much for subscribing, for watching, for commenting, for making me laugh. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. And especially be kind to you. See you the next time.